Hello everybody, today I'm back with another revisited project. This is that teen leaching solution which I've made using citramide base as an inhibitor. But it seems there was lots of questions that friends had. Uh, you know, there was all this calculation behind this solution you can see here. I just did this calculation to make it easier and uh, turn the long story short for you guys to make it much easier uh, it seems there was lots of ambiguity in this uh, mixture I tried to solve them all and here I'm back to revisit this project to make some solution this time much easier uh, to calculate what you need also I consider citramide solution some of you said that you have uh, only 1% concentrated solution and some of you managed to get 15% uh, solution I calculate for both and only thing you need to do is mix them all together I should mention that the temperature here is let's show you the temperature here is about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm saying that because it's important. Uh, your volume you want to add to this solution. I did all this calculation based on 10 degrees Celsius of this environment. So the volume would be a, a little bit lower than you read in room temperature let's review this calculation I've calculated every component for one liter and as you see here this is 380 milliliters of 50 percent uh, nitric acid I also could do this with even 80 percent nitric acid but I lowered it to the 50 for you guys to make it much easier uh, to make 50% uh, solution you can easily convert your 65 or 68% solution to the 50% and uh, here we need 9.23 grams of iron as you can see here is my piece of iron uh, in the previous part I use ready ferric chloride solution ferric nitrate solution but in this part I decided to use only ordinary piece of iron and you need 90 milliliters of 50% nitric acid the strength is same for these two batch of nitric acid but you need 90 milliliter for uh, digestion of iron piece and then you need 28.5 milliliters of hydrochloric acid 30% concentrated if you have 37% or 35% you can just calculate by this formula to get your desired concentration M1V1 equals M2V2 we consider that you need if we consider you need 50 milliliters of 30% uh, hydrochloric acid or whatever else any acid could be uh, calculated in this formula so to calculate according this formula if we need uh, 28.5 milliliters of hydrochloric acid 30% this is how we calculate it 28.5 30% and we have a stock hydrochloric acid with a strength whatever it is I I assume it is 37 so what's the starting value of 37 percent concentrated is needed for this purpose to calculate that 28.5 multiply by 30 and divided by this amount here to achieve final result which is V1 V1 37 
so we need 23.1 about 23.1 so v1 is 23.1 this is the amount of 37 percent concentrated so the final volume is 28.5 28.5 let's subtract these from these to get water amount needed to make that concentration so we need 5.4 milliliters of water to be added to the 23.1 milliliters of 37 uh, percent concentrated hydrochloric acid to make 28.5 milliliters of 30 percent hydrochloric acid i did this just as an example to show you how to calculate this volume and concentration here i demonstrate i also should consider that this mixture is not mine this already be done and been noted in, in the patents I just trying to playing back back and forth with the inhibitor part which I use citrumide this is my uh, part in this whole story so I would place the link the original link of this patent to uh, be checked with you guys might you find something else in that could solve part of this uh, ambiguities and questions so let's make this solution to show what I have here here I have 2.3 grams of iron sheet this is ordinary iron and exactly 2.3 also I consider this tiny piece this is what I need I'm going to make 250 milliliters of solution all amounts for one liter you should multiply them by four and here I have seven milliliters of 30 percent hydrochloric acid and here is 22 milliliters of 50 percent nitric acid this is pre-prepared solution uh, been stored for maybe two months this is not fresh I'm not sure how this works and here is reaction vessel which i'm going to make this solution in that and here is 95 milliliters of 50 percent nitric acid also this is four milliliters of citramide solution how to make this solution first thing first thing we need to do is to do that in the ventilated area and let's bring the slide down and turn the fan on the second step is to add iron pieces into the beaker and here is nitric acid calculated for dissolving iron 22 milliliters of 50 percent nitric acid i add it to this iron piece to start the solution and let's close the lid the brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide will came out of this solution that's why you need to do that in a ventilated area and it's preferred to close lead using watch glass this took about five minutes for iron to be dissolved completely so what is the next step 
the next step is addition of distilled water the water should be added at the as the last part of this mixture but after formation of ferric nitrate I prefer to add some water just in case to prevent forming chloride and nitrosyl ion after mixing uh, hydrochloric acid in nitrate salt I add 100 milliliters of distilled water to dilute ferric nitrate solution then I add 95 milliliters of 50% nitric acid after that I add our inhibitor 4 milliliters of citramide solution and the last part would be hydrochloric acid 7 milliliters of 30 percent concentrated then we need to add water up to 250 milliliters and here we go our solution is ready to be used for leaching solder you should do this at room temperature to make sure uh, copper part not be attacked or a bit cooler is not big deal but rising temperature would cause adverse effect on the underneath copper layer first I add this to see what will happen at the first place when you add your PCV you may observe nothing but after a while you can observe some bubbles coming out exactly where the solder is let's leave this here for some time and I will back after the reaction become completed I also decided to add this piece of computer card this is good example for a PCB that needs to be leached prior to dissolve all gold plated parts and here is some solder from the parts being detached I'm going to place this in this speaker to see uh, how this uh, solution works on the PCB with gold plating And here it is this solution seems worked it's been about uh, 45 minutes the PCB has been immersed in this solution and look at this two IC chips been apart 
and here you can see all copper small dots is in the place and let's try to detach yeah this IC this came off but yeah and same for these pins you know this solution seems to work good for all uniform uh, soldering including the solder part you see on the PCB but it takes uh, some much more time to work on these uh, connectors and IC chips but uh, still it works great and as you see here that was great and there we go this is for oscillator and uh, as you observe all majority of uh, solder is gone except for this place where the connector was connected to and uh, this inhibitor citramide is good for uh, copper but it's not great for uh, nickel you shouldn't just left your PCB in the solution overnight and when you come back you will face with a solution which nickel is dissolved some gold foil relays into the solution same thing happened to this PCB let's pour the liquid here and uh, also remove these parts to not react more than this this solution can be used until it's saturated with tin. This has capacity of about 200 grams of tin per liter. And here is our PCB with gold plating on it. It's clean from all solder, but you need to clean it. And you can see the copper it seemed it attacked in these parts where the gold plating was but let's try it on some other PCBs to decide what is good to do you know this kind of uh, gold plating here isn't pure gold this is called electroless nickel and gold plating I don't know whatever which means there is some nickel in this plating here actually this is alloy of gold and nickel and you can see this is here copper in this part base metal in this part is attacked by this solution but it seems it's not good for this type of gold plating very thin gold plating which is applied wi widely on the computer cards usually modem cards dial up modem as you can see this is gold but it's gold and nickel alloy and uh, this is very thin gold I also tested a cell phone PCB and gold has been attacked by solution but without forming any metastonic acid now that we realize the importance of inhibitor I decided to make two different solutions with different inhibitor concentration here is result caused by low concentration of inhibitor. Gold plated part has lost some gold and fallen into the solution. So I prepared two solutions. First with 38 grams of cetramide per liter and second is 60 grams of cetramide per liter. Solution with 38 grams of inhibitor per liter surprisingly worked only in 30 seconds but still there was trace of attack on the gold plated part. So I decided to test solution with 60 gram per liter of inhibitor. The bubbles are coming up from the solder part and just there is a little bit of fizzing out from the gold plated part. But the rate for solder part is much higher. Let's flip them up to see what we have here
This is resolved from solution with 38 grams of cetramide per liter. But I still prefer 60 grams per liter of inhibitor. As it is evident gold plating is being attacked on the gold plated bottom. So let's check the board from 68 grams per liter solution. There it is. After 10 minutes, you can see here solder is gone. This is only copper and the gold plated part has not been affected. Same for this side. I think it's the best composition possible you can make from citramide and I easily can just detach this MLCCs at the middle that's great but to process these PCBs I, it's a good idea to first using a heating gun to detach all parts and then clean all trace of tin metal on the PCB prior to dissolving in aqua regia and exactly this is what you need this solution works only in 10 minutes with attached part but uh, after detaching all the parts maybe it needs just 5 minutes maximum or 1 to 2 minutes I also tested few pins with this good mixture here is the result Here is brass which been covered with tin for ease of soldering and tin solder is gone and here is gold intact and ready to be processed. And also same for this one. Here is brass and here is gold plated. Let's check another type of pins check this out here is copper as the base metal and here is gold plated and it is intact and solder is gone and this is another with the same design here is copper tin is gone and here is gold plating this mix was great <laughs> I just discovered and here you can see the gold is there it seems it's just affected a bit but you have not to touch the gold foils And here majority of tin is gone you can see the legs with brass as a base metals another thing that I'm going to do is to test this solution over some MLCC's and you can see here majority of these are MLCC's with some impurities some solder and some pins let's add this solution The reaction rate is fast due to the high amount of tin in this mix and at the same time let's test this uh, dial-up modem from computer with low grade gold plating it seems this is nickel and gold cover here to see what will happen after immersing this part in this solution as you can see here the fingers are attacked this is not a solution of choice to do this process on this type of low quality gold plated parts and uh, do not use this solution for this type of which is called electroless nickel and gold plating or whatever else 
I'm not sure but this is not a good idea to do that it seems also we can use this solution for pins here pin is clean you can see copper the tin plated part is gone and at this part you can see gold is in there gold is there and I hope you can see the margin between copper and gold and gold is not affected at all and this is the solution of choice to leach solder now we realize that this solution is a solution actually we need and copper the solution is inhibited much better in this concentration so I'm going to test some other PCBs I have this graphic card I've just bent this uh, part, finger part to be able to place it in this beaker and let's do that this is after 4 minutes and uh, here and here you can see some copper dots and also same for the icy leg and here it seems that still the gold finger is fine let's place it there for some more minutes and after about uh, nine minutes this IC chip has fallen and you can see the underneath layer is clean solder is gone and let's test this one yeah also this came off and same for the BGA place there is some trace of solder but it's almost gone you can see the trace of copper and here the gold is still in the place it's not damaged and still is intact this concentration of inhibitor and this mix I think it's great and this is pretty safe to work with to not lose any gold foils and this is pretty uh, interesting scene you can see all the copper every delicate part of copper is clean and copper is there this is MLCC's it's a bit here is mess because high content of uh, solder let's wash this and see what we got here here is MLCC's as you observe majority of solder is gone but still there is a little bit of solder it seems I need to let it sit for more minutes maybe half an hour but there is something I need to consider about this when you have lots of solder to be leached in uh, for instance in some solder or tinned uh, tin plated pins or exactly like this MLCC's you need to be careful while addition of this solution because it foams a lot and you need lots of space to grow for growing the foam and another thing is that uh, it seems in high amount of solder this composition will make just a little bit of metastanic acid suspended in the solution but metastanic acid is in form of nanoparticles can be poured off easily in case of uh, this MLCCs so I'm going to test this PCB from cell phone board being depopulated completely and only there is gold plating and soldered parts needs to be clean it's about four minutes this PCB been dipped in this solution and let's check it out 
here is copper solder is gone and the gold plated part is still intact and it's need to place in the solution for more minutes to do so I'm going to place it in this vessel just to cover all parts and that way it needs just a few milliliters to cover this PCB this is the result achieved only after 10 minutes majority of solder is gone here is the PCB after being traded with tin leaching solution tin is gone, copper and gold is left behind and all gold plated parts is intact and not being affected with uh, this solution now what I'm going to do is to test this solution our larger amount of uh, gold plated pins to see how it works in larger batches of gold plated pins as you observe these are magnetic pins from computer majority of them are from computer with some uh, pins from the TV I scrapped in the previous videos just enough solution to cover the pins it's been about three minutes these pins were traded with this solution and I remove solution to see what's going on in there you should be careful about this solution while you are using this over the pins and you can see it's the color is changed a bit this pin were being immersed in this solution only for three minutes and as you observe majority of to be said all of tin is gone there is brass and some other parts which is similar to the copper appearance is gold these pins should be contact with the solution only for seconds you should not leave this in this in the solution otherwise gold foil start to being released there it is in the micro scene tin is gone these are brass with some gold plating and this is bottom scene of these pins totally clean there isn't any trace of solder beautiful this wash here to see if there is any gold foil and yes there is some gold foil at the bottom but still there is not metastatic acid this solution also inhibit formation of metastatic acid in the controlled amount of solder which we have reasonable amount of solder and also it seems it's just need to be immersed in this solution for one minute not more and after three minutes here are the gold foils but majority of gold foils still are in the place now what I'm going to do is to dissolve 
all these pins to see what will be released and how much gold foil we can get and to see if any metastatic acid will be formed or not. After reaction became completed, unfortunately some metastatic acid was formed. It seemed there was some tin in alloy of those pins, maybe some bronze. That could be reason you cannot just leave pins in the solution for a long time, since tin alloy will react with tin leaching solution. We got into the trouble, but it's nothing that couldn't be fixed. At least we had luck that lots of tin was cleaned. Now to separate metastatic acid and foils, I'm going to use a trick that one of my subscribers mentioned. You can use Satan Mesh, Hussam Muhammad said. I've already had experience of dissolving metastatic acid or tin oxide hydrate in hot concentrated sodium hydroxide to make sodium stannate. But it needs high temperature and it's not possible to be done in glassware. There is another point that I remember from the experiment. When you alkalize solution by sodium hydroxide, metastatic acid turn into the nanoparticles. So I thought it's good to alkalize solution. That way I can easily separate gold foils from nanoparticles of metastatic acid using a satin mesh. Theoretically, it's easy, but in action you need to pour copper solution as much as you can, since copper will form particles of copper oxide after addition of sodium hydroxide. I've also tested ammonia to alkalize solution. Ammonia is good and will dissolve copper, but it's not as effective as sodium hydroxide is to make metastatic acid nanoparticles. I've already experienced dissolving metastatic acid in concentrated hydrochloric acid so it's not problem to have some copper oxide since copper oxide and last trace of metastatic acid could be washed using concentrated hydrochloric acid as the last step i just started to pour solution and satin mesh to minimize volume to add sodium hydroxide Then to the last bit of remaining materials, sodium hydroxide been added. After mixing it around, black copper oxide formed. Then solution poured again in satin mesh to remove excess water and nitrates. Since in hydrochloric acid washing step, there shouldn't be any nitrates. Otherwise, gold foils will be dissolved. Sudden mesh transfer to a beaker with some 30% hydrochloric acid to be traded. And after that, clean gold foils left behind and copper went into the solution. Since solution contains some metastatic acid, it shouldn't be diluted, otherwise metastatic acid will come out and should be filtered the way it is. Then it could be rinsed with some distilled water.
Here is our clean gold foils. And here is nasty metastanic acid. In this recipe I've just used that 95 milliliters of nitric acid and I subtracted that 22 milliliters from this composition which I've used specifically in previous recipe to dissolve iron and I increased citrumite to 100 milliliters also I decreased hydrochloric acid amount to 5 milliliters this mix is great but you should note that leaching time is somewhere between 30 seconds to half an hour depending on your part. Any hour doing leaching process could lead to copper dissolution. And now we want to conclude. Still there is some questions that needs to be answered. First question is, is this uh, process worthwhile to be done for cleaning solder and extract gold? Well, the answer is it's totally up to you. Uh, if you can easily supply nitric acid, so uh, the answer is yes, this is worthwhile for you. And if uh, you only can obtain some laboratory grade of nitric acid, which costs you too much, so the answer is no. When I talk about being cost effective, this is exactly what I mean. I can supply 20 liters of nitric acid easily only for $100. So that's not a big deal for me to use how much nitric acid as I wish. But if you cannot supply nitric acid in your country, that's what matters here. To choose using hydrochloric acid or nitric acid, this is exactly up to you. And second question is, what type of starting material or uh, to be said what type of electronics can be used as you saw in this video this solution is good only for a material that has not lots of solder on it I mean exactly something like this PCB or telecom board that you already clean all attached parts using heating gun and then you just wanna uh, get rid of solder on this board to be processed for gold I mean you need a uniform thickness of solder all the way lying on this PCB because any difference between solder thickness in uh, different parts cause dissolving copper on the thinner part since the thinner part will be digest much faster than thicker part uh, that way you will lose also some gold gold foils because this solution has an inhibitor to slow down uh, digestion of copper but it doesn't completely stop copper digestion so what matter here is time you need to select your components to minimize the time needed for leaching solder uh, so you shouldn't leave your board into the leaching solution and another thing to mention is that about amount of solder when you want to leach solder and there is lots of solder to be leached exactly in MLCCs or even tin plated pins when you pour the solution and place the pins or other material in this solution the reaction rate is very high and that way 
it seems there is small faction of uh, inhibitor which is not working properly some metastatic acid will form exactly for these pins when I try to dissolve solder from these pins some metastatic form but that was remarkably a lower amount comparing when you just directly use full strength nitric acid that way there was be lots of metastatic acid that is kind of impossible to clean these foils out of metastatic acid in this video we hang on the conclusion what is the best composition for tin leaching solution and what is the best material to for this solution to be used with and i would say pcbs the best material you can use is uh, with this solution is pcb like cell phone pcb or telecom pcb which are gold plated the gold plating will not be affected and also we have learned how to clean or our contaminated gold foil with metastatic acid i should thank you to our friend hossam muhammad he proposed using satan mesh to clean gold foil and it was really effective which surprised me and this project is done hope i've cleared things up properly and hope you enjoy that's all and see you next time